Hello, this is uh, Mrs. Food Forest, I guess. Um, oh, and here's Kimo. Hello. Uh, so uh, I was asked to make a video about some of my plants. So I'm just going to talk about this area here that I've made my tea collection. Okay, so we'll start over here. Um, this is, I don't know the name of this tea plant, T-I. Um, it was from Stan's mom's house and it likes shade so it, it stays over here. There are hundreds of cultivars of tea. Um, so a lot of times it's hard to know what their actual um, like name of it is. Uh, before we get over there, I have just a couple things in pots. Here's a fiddle leaf fig. Um, behind it is a fishtail palm that I took as a cutting sort of from um, our huge one in the front. And it, it's growing, which is great. Back here is a kamani tree. It's a canoe plant that the Hawaiians brought over. And this one is a Euranthemum tricolor that is here to get color and to hide the sewer pipe. So, okay, so backing up, I made this planter uh, in this wall out of concrete blocks that were on the property when we bought it that we dug up. So I'm just repurposing those. And here, we'll start at down at the bottom. So throughout I have this, which is a dwarf lawa'e fern. And lawa'e is a native, ho native plant to Hawaii. And the dwarf, I think, is just a cultivar somebody made. But it's great because it doesn't get too tall and it spreads in the back. Um, another tea I don't know the name of, but it's purpley and spiky, a little extra spiky than others. This one is Exotica, which used to have white in the leaf, which um, has reverted back to green and red, and um, looks like another one I have further down called Hawaiian Flag, but still pretty, still growing. So I filled in from the back with a few alocasia and colocasia. This one is Yucatan, Yucatan Princess. That's doing much better than um, I thought it would. So that's great. So I have them growing down there. Okay, next is Kawaii Beauty. I really like this one because it has fat leaves that are kind of shorter. And the coloring is really great. So there's a new shoot. These are all growing really well right now. We're in August, end of August. So all summer they've been growing. And here is a, oh, someone told me, Xanthansoma albo marginata. So, or a variegated Mickey Mouse stingray. So those are very popular right now. And um, this is the biggest one I have. Okay, and back there is an unnamed yellow and green with ants on it. So, get some of the depth of color. Okay, and here is one that my friend who introduced me to the idea of collecting tea plants, um, she didn't have a name for it. I named it Sunrise Sherbert because it used to have um, a lot of orange leaves. Actually, I think I might be wrong. Okay, so I'm not sure which one this one is, but it's purple when it gets new leaves and then it gets, as it ages, it turns green. And you can see the growth pattern of these. These are cordyline, cordyline fructicosa. And as the leaves age, then they Right back here. Then you can rip them off or they fall off here at the stem. They're very easy to propagate because all you have to do is to take a piece of stem 
like I like to do like six or eight inches and stick it in some soil and within a few weeks you'll get um, sprouts out the side or you can even take like a three inch piece and it'll take longer but you can lay it sideways on the soil or vertical and it'll sprout from there okay so back there is Royo or Moses in the Cradle I've heard it called this is the full-size version that I got um, at a park near our house because it was just lying on the ground so I took it home here's another type of tea so this is a miniature um, doesn't do doesn't grow a ton it's just full leaves okay. okay so moving over Okay, I think this one might actually be the Sunrise Sherbert one that I named. Because you can see it has some orange. I know it's really bright sunlight right now, so maybe hard to see. And then it has pinks with the greens. And just really nice coloring. Back here is a Mele Kalikimaka, which is Merry Christmas in Hawaiian. And this one has grown super fast. Um, I think when I put it in here, it was maybe like this tall. And now just over the year, this year, because I created this bed in January of this year. Um, it's grown a lot. Okay, so this one is called Showgirl. It's doing something very strange. And I don't, uh, I don't know why, but um, I'm just observing. So it started just putting out uh, tiny leaves after making large ones so I'm guessing that was from transplanting it into this bed and maybe the roots got too damaged but it's still alive and it's getting bigger leaves as it grows so um, it should be good should survive and this is showgirl that's narrow leaves um, narrow kind of medium length and kind of grows kind of like those um, the feathers, I'm guessing, like in Vegas and those shows and stuff. Okay, so moving on. This one is called Lady in Waiting. And the coloring has changed a bit since I got it. It all depends how much sun they get, how much and how little sun they get. Um, that really affects the coloring of them. And so I want to show you another funny thing on this one. So this one... The large leaves off of this stem started um, dying and then it started pushing out new growth here, 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 um, as well as making a cakey at the bottom. So there, there's a new one coming up. Um, so I think at some point when these start to get bigger, I'll probably trim the plant um, down further here um, and then make this a new one to plant elsewhere in the garden or keep it in a pot or something but another one with kind of stubby leaves that I like okay so here is another uh, I can't remember if it's alocasia or colocasia this one is called illustrious also doing pretty good Okay, and then here's the Hawaiian flag that I mentioned earlier that the exotica is kind of reverting to look like this one. And um, it's called Hawaiian flag because it has red, green, yellow, which are the colors of a flag some people here think is the authentic Hawaiian flag um, versus the one we have politically. Um, so that's just where the name comes from. Okay, back here, another alocasia, colocasia, similar to African mask, but without the um, kind of scalloping on the edges, so I'm not sure what this one's called. And if I sound out of breath, it's because I'm 37 weeks pregnant, so ha <laughs> ha, that's, that's why. Okay, this is a dwarf hibiscus. It has an orange flower, sorry, not blooming. Um, but happy back there, which is nice. 
And here is one of my favorites, possibly my favorite here. No, it's not, but I have a lot of favorites. This one is called Red Sister, and it's a very bright magenta pink. Grows really well. It's a pretty fast grower too. Um, so I have two stems, two branches actually. And I just love all the colors. Pink and dark pink. Okay. Alright, so then hiding back here. I'm gonna go down again. Up and down. This is another miniature. Miniature tea. I don't know the name of this one. Um, and then another of those uh, Xanthan Somas Albo Marginata. Not quite as big. It's okay. So this one's more browns. A little purple, which is why I got it. Okay. Here's more of that Yucatan Princess. That wasn't doing well elsewhere, so I just kind of put them in different areas and see how they do. Here you can see the Lawa'e fern, so this is how it spreads. It puts out these roots, these runners, and they will um, make new ones as they travel along. That's pretty. Okay, and then to anchor the tea garden here. TI again, we're not drinking this, um, is kind of the classic green tea. Um, I've seen it as uh, King Kamehameha tea, or um, some even just call it like uh, hula skirt tea because this is what generally, because um, the leaves are so big, that it would be simplest to use to make hula skirts so it's growing well this summer so we can get the new growth something I have to keep an eye on is um, all of these new leaves they tend to get a lot of aphids so I have to, when I wash um, when I water them I wash off the aphids with the hose and that keeps them in check enough without adding um, like pest control substances. Okay, and then another dwarf hibiscus that um, one of our friends at a nursery, Happy Plants, so she's given me a few to kind of rehab and thankfully they've survived. And so this is one as well. Okay, so back up. Alright, so that's just part of our driveway, and um, it's all above grade, to where I made a wall with the, the CMU blocks here, and then um, backfilled with potting soil, and added some um, oh, black cinders and also some of our native soil just because our native soil is kind of clay-y not super clay-y but um, help, just to help it retain some more water than normal so all right thank you bye